So nice to see all of your bright and shining, smiling faces on this beautiful Sabbath day, this Memorial Day weekend. It's not uh, Alexander's favorite thing to get up front, but that was my birthday gift. So thank you, Alexander, for my birthday present. That's probably the best one you, you could have. And uh, thank you, uh, Dave, for that absolutely terrifying story. Oh, my goodness. Ooh, service with a smile. That's what we're talking about. If you look behind me, we worship, we connect, we serve. Let me see. We, uh, we are talking about this service, this series. And when we were saying, hey, we need to have a sermon to talk about each of these three, I raised my hand like, oh, I want to talk about service. This is a, a topic that is near and dear to my heart. Service. But it needs to come with a smile. Service on its own is not enough. Service with a smile. And I will illustrate this in three short stories. In the 1970s, Nordstrom's, a store known for its fancy clothing, and exceptional service. They were expanding into Alaska, Anchorage to be specific. And the story goes that they had expanded their facility and what had once been a BFG Goodrich Tire Service now became a Nordstrom's store. And a manager is sitting there in watching people come in, and he sees through the door an older gentleman walk in with a singular snow tire. Looks questioningly at him, is curious what's going to happen. As this man walks up to the young clerk who is at the, the till, <laughs> waiting to help people come in, he's kind of standing back, and I'm curious what's going to happen. What will this young clerk do when he's presented with this older gentleman carrying a tire? And he looks a little confused. And he walks up to the clerk and he says, I bought a tire here and it doesn't fit my car and I'd like to return it. Without missing a beat, the clerk says, well, how much did you pay for it? Gentleman says, $25. He goes back over to the till, takes $25 out, walks back over, hands the gentleman $25, takes the tire, and he says, next time, I hope you come back to buy <laughs> some fine men's clothing. And out walked the man. <laughs> it's a true story, as far as I know. In fact, it's what I was told during a, a business class when we talked about service. They took that tire, put it up in their warehouse, put a big sign above it, and this is what service looks like. Nordstrom's fancy store took back a tire. I'm curious what was going through the mind of that young clerk. Am I going to get in trouble for this? Is this what I'm supposed to do? But he knew that Nordstrom's, who over a hundred years ago had started out as a shoe store and they stood behind service and quality that if you could, if you didn't like your shoes, you could turn them back in again. And he had heard these stories and when presented with this opportunity, he jumped at an opportunity to make this man's day and go down in Nordstrom's history, lore forever, because Nordstrom's can say, wow, we stand for service with a smile. May not always be with a, a smile. I mean, it may be with a smile, but maybe not one that is genuine. Have you experienced a time where you've gone to an establishment and the person felt like they weren't genuine in their service. They did it because it was a job, they had to be there, but you didn't feel it. Sometimes 
The service doesn't always go as planned, but is the person there at the counter just going through the motions? There's another story, our second story about Farrell's ice cream. Have you ever been to a Farrell's ice cream? Well, sad to say, you can't go to one anymore. They're all gone. Many years ago, Mr. Farrell of Farrell's Ice Cream tells a story of getting a letter from an upset customer. The letter read something like this. Dear Mr. Farrell, I love your ice cream store. I love when I walk in the fun atmosphere. I love the burgers. I love the ice cream. When I was at your establishment most recently, I asked for an an extra pickle. I always ask for an extra pickle every time. I've been coming to your store for years. And every time when I ask for a pickle, with a smile, they add an extra pickle to my order. This last time I went, I asked for an extra pickle, and the lady there at the cash register said, no problem, that'll be 75 cents. And he wrote in his letter, dear Mr. Farrell, if that's how you're going to run your establishment, I'm not coming back. It became the, the rallying cry of Farrell's ice cream. Give him the pickle. Just give him the pickle. <sighs> Lifetime value of a customer is f- worth far more than the 75 cents you might get for a pickle. Delight people. Give them service with a smile. There's a famous book that Mr. Farrell writes about give them the pickle. And I don't know exactly the correlation, but Farrell's ice cream, while they really stood for please give them the pickle, they are no longer in business. And I'm not sure how those two are are connected. But uh, yes, give them the pickle. There are... Lots of opportunities to serve. And my third story, many, 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 many years ago, there were a group of men. They'd been walking a long ways and they went to sit down and eat. And these men were ready to eat, but they looked around one another and they realized there was no one there to help them wash up for their meal, to clean. They'd been walking on a long and dusty road. And it was very common at that time that because you walked in sandals at that time, before you ate, someone would come and wash your feet. In fact, it was It was really not an enjoyable task, as you can imagine. Nobody liked that job, to wash feet of people walking down these muddy, dusty, dirty roads. The leader of this group, without missing a beat, hopped up, grabbed a basin of water. You know what he did. You know the story. He started washing their feet. The leader... Alexander, you told us about this just a little bit ago. Servant leadership is something I aspire to. Service with a smile. John 13, 12 through 14. When he had washed their feet and put on his outer garments and resumed his place, he said to them, Do you understand what I have done to you? You call me teacher and Lord, and you are right. For so I am. If I then, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. Service with a smile. Last Sabbath, 
I had the incredible opportunity. Who was here? Anybody remember baptisms, what we did last Sabbath? Oh, warms my heart. I had to teach the class that led up to that. Uh, Mr. Martinez and I, for a number of, I think about seven Wednesdays, we taught at Pine Hills. We taught those classes to those kids. And it was a really reaffirming experience to teach a baptismal class. You get down to the basics. How I understand and believe baptism to be is it's not well, once you know everything about Christianity, then you may get baptized. It's what is the journey that you're signing up for? Let's take a few classes to go cover some of the basics to understand exactly what we're talking about. What does baptism mean? And these kids had some really good questions. And I really appreciated that I got to talk about how our Seventh-day Adventist church, once a quarter, takes this beautiful symbol of washing each other's feet, and we do that. We do that because we are reminded of what Jesus did for those disciples, that servant leadership, and he did so with a smile. And we talked about that at length in our baptismal class. And it was such a nice thing just, oh, let's sit in that. What does that mean? As I was talking to my, my father about this sermon topic before it happened, we, I was doing research, thinking about it. And service is a law of the universe similar to gravity. It is something that we all have inside of us. I am blessed with a heritage of service. As a young kid, I got to go on mission trips. My father led out on mission trips to different parts of the world, and that made a huge impact on me. And I would observe adults and youth stop what they were doing, raise money, and fly far away to help one another. It was such an important part of my upbringing. Dave Ramsey, in his financial peace class, he talks about servant leadership. That always stuck with me, and I really like this idea of servant leadership. It's not just for him. He He's taken that from other people. And whenever I have an opportunity to be in a position of, of leadership, that's my foundation. I, as many of you know, I was a school principal up in Coeur d'Alene for a number of years. And of any success that we had, I can really attribute it back to this idea that my job as the principal was to make sure my teachers had what they needed when they needed it. And sometimes I was running to the store because they had a science experiment, they needed something else. Sometimes that was unclogging a toilet. It was doing whatever it needed to be done because leadership is best done from a servant's heart. I love Pastor Mel's ministry of baking bread. What an incredible chance when my, when my pastor is also my baker. And Julie on yesterday, uh, leading out this group of young people, making sure that this place looks beautiful. I love that. I love that our church works so hard and walks in this servant leadership. I'm not a big fan of the lottery, but it is fun to dream about. When you ask people, ah, if you were to win the lottery, if you got those mega millions, what would you do? Time and time again, people usually answer something like this. Well, I'd, I'd buy this or I would uh, take care of this. Fairly quickly, 
What you would find is that after taking care of their immediate needs, most people start talking about what they could do to help those around them. They want to take that big windfall of money and start to help others. I learned to become a fundraiser while being a principal, taking some classes to do that. And I asked a good friend of mine who had been a fundraiser at Loma Linda University, oh, how do you ask for money? That's so hard. Like, what do you do? And I loved her answer because asking people for money, you might get queasy just thinking about that. It's like, well, people who have means, they want to make a difference. They want to serve. And as someone who is doing the fundraiser, you are the conduit for helping them to be of service. Because money sitting in the bank doesn't actually do anybody any good. And they know that. But if you as the fundraiser, you as a school principal, you as the pastor, you as a person in a place of leadership, you can help those people take those resources and help them serve. I love our church. Did you guys know that in 1923, in, I think it was, wasn't in this building, but it was at a room at a wrecking yard here in town, a few Adventists started to meet. Later on, they grew and grew and grew, and they eventually built this building 100 years ago. I'm always curious. Anybody know what the other little spire thing is? I have no idea, but it sure looks cool. Must have been a bell tower or something. Uh, I don't know. I love our church. And I love that when I talk about our church, my, my sister here is, is visiting from Southern California. I drive around and I get to show her the, the ark. Our church has this incredible ministry called the ark where we take care of the unhoused, their medical needs, dental. What a great ministry that, uh, that is. And then we drive a little further around and we have the orchard and the garden and the food from those goes to our community service where the unhoused can again go and get food, can get clothing, can be helped in so many important ways. They can take a shower. They can do those things that we might take for granted. But our church does that. And then just up the way, our number one ministry, where more of our resources go than any other ministry, is just up the way. Speaking of a servant leader, it was really neat to see David Carrion playing the drums, serving these kids. Because Pine Hills is our number one ministry. Those kids... We value service. How do we do it though? What, how, how can I get involved? I don't really know. I'm, do I need to win the lottery in order to really be of service? Well, I'm here to tell you that uh, we've got you covered. I want you to pull out of your bulletin this sheet right here. On the front says Auburn Seventh-day Adventist Church Volunteer Guide. And I'm going to read this first flap here when you open it. It says, interested in volunteering? The Auburn SDA Church wouldn't function without the faithful and dedicated service of countless volunteers every week. We're always looking for a few individuals to help out in various ministries. Please place a check mark beside each ministry you are interested in and fill out the contact info below. Place it in the offering plate or give it to a volunteer or a pastor or even at the end of this service, I'm going to ask for a couple of deacons to stand at the door and you can hand it to them there. We're going to go through this right now because I think that's important. We have in our hearts the desire to serve, to serve with a smile and your church is giving you that opportunity and you don't even need to win the lottery We start with we worship. If you open up, and it's also on the slide behind me. Adult Sabbath school, AV, deacons and deaconesses. Sometimes this is a term that some people might miss. The deacons 
and the deaconesses take care of the church facility. What an important role in our church. And I did jump over real quick the AV. Uh, Scott back there is octopus man. He is taking care of all of that AV by himself. And I haven't heard feedback once today. He's doing an incredible job. I don't want to see him back there by himself. If that's... If that is something you feel a burden on your heart, I'm encouraging you, while I go through this list, find two things that you are curious about, not committing to, but curious about. We go down the list, there's children's Sabbath school, children's story. It doesn't have to be about a terrifying experience in a cave, (laughs) but it can be. Greeters, oh, I love the greeters that greet us and start our day off here at church with a smile. Worship, music, the worship planning team, and of course, youth ministries. We had breakfast this morning, and my beautiful wife and my visiting sister helped us make breakfast. That's it's something that every Sabbath that we need to do because we believe in if you feed them, they will come. Help out. We'd love to have you. Check that box and say, I'd like to learn more. That is on our worship list. Our next section is on connection. We connect. There's a lot of great opportunities here. Adventurers Club, baby bridal showers and weddings. Those are neat things that our facility gets to help each other with. Communion, the newsletter, Pathfinder Club, potluck, fellowship lunch. Oh, I do love me a good potluck. Prayer, social event planning, vacation Bible school. VBS is coming up this summer and Miss Grace would love to have your help. We would all love to have your help to have that be a successful event. We connect. Find one Two things on this. Please check this today. We connect. This is important to us. This last section is we serve. Adventist community services. This is what I was talking about. ACS. The garden. The orchard. Those weeds don't weed themselves. Auburn Renewal Center. The ark. I love that we have the ark. The Auburn Care Team. This is a very, very valuable ministry. Decorating, landscaping. Miss Julie could use some more landscapers out there yesterday, but they did a great job. But it needs to keep happening. When people walk through, they look at the environment that we have created. Is this a welcoming place where this facility has been prepared for them? Well, it starts when they walk in those doors and they see all of the beautiful landscaping that has happened. The meal train. You may have gone through an experience where, oh, making food just wasn't on the top of your list. And when the community comes together to provide food for you, it's the best thing in the world to know that people can feed you and that you can feed others. Again, you don't have to win the lottery to be of service and safety. Nothing happens on this campus without being safe. If we don't feel that we are safe in our church, nothing else matters. And so there are people who walk around our church parking lot who make sure that in all of our different rooms there is a walkie-talkie, that there is a protocol to make sure that we keep our kids safe, that we keep each other safe, that this is a place where you can come without fear. But we do so because we have a safety team. That might be up your alley. That might be worth a little check mark, something that you do. And what I would like you to do is if you are already on that list, go ahead and check it again. Sometimes I like writing to-do lists but I've already done the thing, and so I write it so then I can cross it off. No one, have you ever done that? You've, you're already doing these things. Go ahead, check that off. 
I love our church because in many ways it reflects service with a smile. The people that week after week come up here to share their talents up front and in the back and outside and our different ministries, they do so with a smile. And I encourage you to be a part of that. It is innate in us that we have a desire to serve. It is a law of the universe that when we give of ourselves, we receive in return. When we give of ourselves, we receive in return. And there is no better example of this than Jesus. It's a neat picture. Take a minute to think about that. The creator of the universe here and as a human, as a man walking amongst people said, I'm going to clean some fishermen's feet. They're dirty. They need to be cleaned. Someone's got to do it. I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it with a smile. Let us pray. God in heaven, thank you for the example that you gave to us, that you washed the feet of those around you, that you were human on this planet and you knew how important it was to serve and then how that service can impact the lives of another and another and another and another. We thank you for this example. May it be a part of our lives every single day. Thank you for this church that gives us an opportunity to serve one another here and in this community and far abroad. Thank you for this day. In your name we pray, amen.